Alright guys, I thought I would do a SolidWorks quick tip. Uh, this isn't going to be super quick, but fairly quick video. So, um, what I wanted to cover was the idea behind um, organization of files. And I have, you know, tried a lot of different ideas in the past. And what I thought I would cover is two, uh, I don't know if you'd call them ethos, two different ethos, or just two different ways of organizing files, uh, specifically the modeling tree. And so the different, these two parts are identical. Uh, they've been grouped differently. So the part on the left is grouped what I would I would call it grouping by intent or um, grouping by feature and the part on the right I hope I said part on the left part on the right is what I would call fillets at the bottom fillets and chamfers and I don't know what this is doing down here this should be up here somewhere but it's dependent on a fillet uh, yeah so this is one of my this is what I would call a bad habit uh, let's ignore that because the point of this video is something different. So um, what you'll find on complicated parts, the more complicated the part gets, the more that it becomes uh, unchangeable if you don't plan for change. So if you make a part and you have no intention of changing it in the future and you nest fillets, and we're looking at the part on the left, or excuse me, on the right here, uh, we're looking at these fillets. If you nest these and just sprinkle them throughout the part, what you find is a, you go back to modify it and fillets cause failures. And so uh, you'll be dealing with a fillet and it's failed and you're trying to figure out how to reorganize it. You're moving it around to get your part to work because you've modified your part. And so I would call one type of best practice having all of your fillets, all the ones that make sense, there's a couple up above like fillet 13 and 14, but all of your fillets need to be at the bottom of the tree. Um, that way when you're trying to modify your main part, you're trying to go back and do some changes, you basically have no filleting, right? And so that allows you to add and delete fillets at the bottom of the part fairly easily. And what uh, you shouldn't do, which is what I did here, is add um, what I would call a base feature at the bottom of that at the bottom of that tree. And so, really, what that should be, this should be moved clear back up here somewhere, probably right after that thing was mirrored. Um, if you watch the last video, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, the other type of intentional grouping would be uh, I would call it by by feature or by um, intent or you might even be able to group by machine process so lathe mill weld those types of things and the nice thing about these if you do them right and you don't like uh, this arm you can delete that tree you can I'm not going to attempt to do it but if you do it well a lot of times you can delete this and it will delete the entire arm with all the features in one clean shot. Um, so you can see that this folder holds everything that does that arm. Uh, this folder here holds everything that does the front two arms, the double arms. And then this folder here holds everything that does the base. And there's advantages to this as well. If I want to roll all of this back and just deal with the base, I can do that. Um, if I want to deal with the double arms, I can work on this portion here. I know all these features make up these arms. And so two different uh, ethos, two different uh, ways of separating out your intention. Um, I like the one on the left more and more. I like to group the work that I'm doing if possible. Sometimes you're going to have machine parts or uh, consumer products that just don't, that doesn't work very well because you're sort of iterating your way through the shape. Um, but a lot of times you can go back at the end and sort of group things as much as possible. So you'll do smaller groupings maybe. 
Uh, there's um, so I find that I a lot of times I'll start with what the part is on the right. I'll start and it will look like that where I try to move all my filleting to the bottom. But a lot of times I can end up with the part on the left where I've got things grouped together intentionally so that if I need to make changes, it's easy to do it. You know, I can actually hit suppress here and it will just suppress out that whole component. Where over here on the right, that's not so easy to do. I have to pick my way through the features to suppress that arm out. And um, if I've done it well, which I don't know if I have, I can actually suppress things independently and they shouldn't affect the other parts. So yeah, you can see that I've been able to suppress the double arms, doesn't affect the single arm. So these two folders are independent of each other, which is very nice. So I would say the part on the left has more advantages. The part on the right may be easier for someone who's doing uh, consumer design with curvy things. Um, so I thought I'd just bring that to you guys and uh, just two different ways of modeling something, the exact same part. Uh, truth be told, I actually took the part on the right and grouped it into the part on the left. So hope this helps someone and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.